Hey folks, welcome back. As you can see, I'm still upright. It's been, uh, uh, I don't know, 10 days since I survived the Widowmaker heart attack and I'm feeling pretty good. Just a little tired. Still have a raspy voice. Got I got some news for you on several things tonight. And I thought I'd just make a little short video because basically that's all I can make right now. This is a 1990 Monarch 10 EE lathe that several videos ago I showed you about having a bent spindle and all kinds of problems. Well, there's been a resolution. The former owner uh, graciously allowed me to buy the machine. And in return, I'm going to sell the Blue Monarch that, frankly, I don't think is really worth saving. Uh, it's very dangerous to run right now. And uh, I think... I think it's going to go to a lot more machines if we do it this way. Now, someone just had to have it whole like it is and totally understood what they're going to have to do to make it work again. The motor runs. Everything runs fine. We tuned it up. It's just got a lot of wear uh, in the apron. Now, yes, I could make that machine make parts, but I'd rather make this 40-year newer machine make parts because frankly you don't see many of these 90 year model 10 EEs running around and uh, it's got a lot of problems but I think those can be overcome especially by combining two possibly three lays together we can make this one back to semi-normal now this is what they call one of the solid state drive. Doesn't have tubes, doesn't have a motor generator, doesn't have the works in the drawer. It's modular and this big cabinet contains all the electronics to run the big DC motor that's in the base. Now the DC motor is a 120 slash 240 volt DC motor. And it runs at 1500 on 120 and 3500 on 240. I got that one right. Ticker can't keep me down. Now, remember that's DC. So the AC that's coming into the building has to be converted. And that's the job of this little board right here. Problem is, this machine isn't going full speed. When we got it in, we tested it and found all the other problems and then found the motor drive was not big enough for the machine. It, it, it nearly killed the project. But thanks to another individual I'll tell you more about later on, uh, maybe most of the really expensive parts have been taken care of. It still leaves me with a lay that only goes maybe 2,000 RPMs when it's supposed to go 4,000 RPMs. And we've tracked it down to being a controller that only has 180 volts instead of the 240 volts to make it go full speed. That's just something we got to work through. Now, now I can't show you the whole machine because basically it's up against a wall. But other problems is a bent spindle. A piece of uh, it's cracked dovetail right here. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I may have to make a whole new plate. We'll see. Apron's loose, whacked. And the bed has some wear in it. It's a ninth, it was made in 10 of 90. 
by Monarch. This is one of the metric slash inch versions, so you can do metric threads uh, and American threads on it. Or this part looks pretty good. There's some wear in the idlers. I'll take those off and true them up so we don't have that vibration in it. We're going to pull the headstock apart and see what we can do about the spindle because frankly I think the bearings in this one are shot. I'll show the rest of the machine to you when I get it turned around. I tried last night. It's up on some one inch uh, solid rollers I've got it on and Frankly, I tried to turn it around because basically this is where it's going to sit. It's too much for me. Like the guy said, it's hell getting old. Now on to Bob. I'm back. Kind of like the ring to that. <laughs> oh, by the way, I was just overwhelmed by the outpouring of well wishes from you guys. Thank you. It really means a lot to me. I'll try to stick around as long as I can. One of you guys wrote me a nice letter and said he had one of these machines, which is a 1973 Chucker, Bob the Chucker Lathe. And, and for those that you don't know, a Chucker Lathe is different in that it has no tailstock. So you don't have a defined center on the end of your bed. And your cross slide goes in and out. It doesn't go up and down, but uh, it goes in and out. So he was perplexed about how to find the center. So that when he wanted to drill something, say using a chuck, online, how in the heck to find it? How to set the tools up to do it? So, I haven't had Bob very long, and I tried to think of the way I would do it. This may be totally wrong, but this is the way I found it works. First off, you need a few things. I've gone ahead and inserted a half-inch 5C collet into uh, old Bob's snoot there, and I'm going to insert a hardened ground half-inch a rod that I have. Put it in there and I'm going to tighten it up. Don't have to be real tight, just semi-tight. Would y'all like to see closer doing all this? I put the half inch rod into the collet. Now, you may ask, Steve, what the hell good does that do when this just goes back and forth? This is where, on these chuckers, you got to set up in each individual uh, tool. So, we need to look around and uh, see what's in the toolbox. Now, these are all items that, that um, go on that machine. And what I'm looking for is a half inch round tool holder that will fit on that chuck and we'll use it to line it up. I also need a couple other little things. I'll show you what this does in a minute. Now you see I've got the, the bar in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this tool holder and that will give, well that's not a tool holder. Get over here. And what that allow me do is to do is use this tool holder. See right there, I'm as far back as I can go. Well I'm going to bring it forward a little bit. And we'll back off and I'm going to install this, this tool holder. It's got a little ledge right there that goes against the face of the, the turret. And 
You're over here. Which way are you guys going? And that it's just got a hole in it. If you turn this around backwards, it'll be cocked at an angle. So make sure you have the lip the right way. We'll slide that in place and just kind of take up a little tension on the bolts. Still move it there. All right. Now this is the important part. I put a little lube from my fingers on that shaft. And then I run this forward and I move this tool to where it inserts on that shaft. Would you like to see closer? You can see right here, back and forth. like that back and forth now I'm going to take up some more slack on that then start tightening it down don't crank it down all at once or you won't ever be happy with it That goes in perfectly. So now that I have that done, so now that I have the tool holder, a collet, and a half inch precision bar inserted in this, I need to mark where zero would be. Now, you can reach over here on the side and there's a little pointer I can move to it and just I'm going to do that just for the heck of it but that's not very precise that's where this piece of equipment comes in this is a stop that fits in this t-channel and will provide a positive stop on the back this goes in like so I said it goes in like the so. Just like Don, stubborn. There we go. As you can see, slides up and down this track, and I'm going to run it up and I'm going to tighten it down against this permanent stop on the, the cross side. That's not the right one. All right. What I've done is this can no longer go any farther back that way. And there's a little bitty, just an Allen screw, that you can adjust for precision back here. But now there's also another one that... This one is bored. See the little. See that little precision adjustment? You do the gross adjustment with the T and the nut, and then you can fine tune it with this Allen screw. Anyway, this one is designed fit on this side so that you can also install it as a positive stop. The part you're making you want it to be so far this way and it'll adjust on either side of this permanent block right here. So now we tighten that up. We've tightened this block up here So now I've tightened up this block, the toolbox in place, it still slides in, in and out, and I just run it back there and move that and then try again. 
see by pushing it as far as I could that way it won't go any farther it'll come forward but once I hit that stop it'll stop and then I check it run it in so guys that's the uh, the way I came up with doing this I don't know if they advise it to be done that way or not works for me that's how I'm gonna do it uh, one more thing before I go one of the previous videos of Bob showed me using this large collet and one of the guys said there's supposed to be another part on there so I started digging through and he was right I found it this threads onto the spindle nose and puts pressure on these larger outer diameter collets in the right place so now that all works I guess it works like this thanks for the tip Bob appreciates it oh uh, one other thing when I got Bob uh, the previous owner died and uh, he was the original owner of Bob and had it in a machine shop for years ever since the 70s and uh, I decided to clean out the sump well he's been dead in Alzheimer's for about six years it was the smelliest crap so this machine has a built-in oil pump and a sump down here and you're supposed to use oil and that's why Bob's got this coating of stuff everywhere that's all the cool oil anyway I drained all I could out and then I uh, put in a half a gallon of diesel and ran it for a long time sure made a big difference in the way it smelled but as soon as I figure out where Bob's going to go with the other lathe coming into this area, I don't know. Bob may just stay right here. Anyway, once again, thank you for all your well wishes. It means a lot to an old guy. God, I never thought I would say it was an old guy. Not as old as Don, okay? Thanks. Come again.